welcome to whatever this is. <laughs> June 5th, uh, 2023, meeting of the City of Summit Zoning Board of Adjustment. My name is Stephen Spur, and I am chairman of the Summit Zoning Board. In accordance with New Jersey Statute 10, 4-10, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to a newspaper of record and has been posted here in City Hall. This meeting is a judicial proceeding. Any questions or comments must be limited to the issues that are relevant to what the board may legally consider in reaching a decision and decorum appropriate to a judicial hearing must be maintained at all times. For the benefit of the interest, interested public, this meeting is being live streamed to the city's YouTube page and also broadcast on Summit's government channel, which is Comcast channel 34 and Verizon channel 30. Please note that fire exits are to my right, your left, and at the back of the room where you entered. The city has a listening system to assist the hearing impaired. If anyone needs hearing assistance, please obtain the system at the dais and return it after our meeting. Mr. Dennis Galvin will be served acting as the zoning board's attorney this evening. Uh, Mr. Galvin will advise board members on matters of law and is the key interface with an applicant's attorney. Mr. Galvin does not vote on the applications. Stephanie Sulios is a city employee and is the zoning board secretary. Ms. Sulios assists applicants with the, the preparation of their applications, planning of our agendas, and keeping our meeting minutes. Ms. Sulios does not vote on the applications. Our board consists of seven regular members and up to four alternates. All members can participate in the hearings tonight, but a maximum of seven can vote. Most applications require a simple majority to be approved. Some applications require five affirmative votes to be approved. You'll be told which majority will be required before we begin our deliberations. Ms. Julios, will you please call the roll of the members? Sure. Chairman Spur? Here. Vice Chairman Steiner? Here. Ms. Newell? Here. Mr. Gonzalez? Here. Mr. Mullen? Here. Mr. Malay? Here. Mr. Loikett? Here. Ms. Toth, Ms. Sager, Mr. Feskins, and Mr. Yuko are all excused for the evening. If you have a quorum, you may proceed. Our alternates are taking that role to heart tonight, aren't they? Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's summer. Anyways, that's right. We generally hear the applications in the order they are listed on the agenda. We try to have each hearing last no more than 30 minutes, but do understand that some applications are too complex to be heard within that time frame. Each hearing begins with the applicant or their attorney giving an overview of the application and the variances that are required. We then hear from any expert witnesses the applicant may have to help explain the, the application and why vari the variances are needed. The board members may ask questions of the applicant, their attorney, or the expert witnesses. Once the board professionals and board members have completed their questioning, the public will have an opportunity to ask questions. This is not the time to tell us what you think about this application. That opportunity comes at the end of the hearing. Before you ask your questions, please clearly state your name, spell your last name, and provide your address. It is important that our court reporter be able to keep a clear and accurate public record. The court reporting is done actually over the audiovisual system, so important you speak clearly into the microphone. Uh, after all witnesses have been heard, members of the interested public have their second opportunity to speak, and at that time, you may express your opinion, positive or negative, about the application. Then the public hearing is closed, and we enter into executive session where the board members discuss the application and vote. You, you, you will be able to listen to our executive session, but you will not normally be able to participate in our discussion. Most applications are heard and decided in the same evening. If an application requires additional information or testimony that cannot be presented tonight, we will carry your application to another date and it will not be decided during this meeting. Krista Anderson, the city zoning officer, has asked that I remind all applicants that they must read carefully the resolution that documents the zoning board's decision and to pay particular attention to the conditions contained in the resolution. For example, if a landscaping plan is required, you must obtain one and submit it to John Linson, the city's forester. If a grading plan is required, you must have one prepared by a civil engineer and submit three copies along with the application fee to the city's engineering division. Failure to satisfy all conditions in a resolution will result in a delay in approving your application as it will necessitate additional follow-up from zoning and other city staff. The resolutions documenting the board's decision will normally be available one month after we decide the application. Uh, before we jump in, if you'll please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we're going to shuffle the uh, order of public hearings slightly, but before we actually jump into the presentation, I'll ask just a representative of each of the cases to come before us. Just tell us how many uh, experts you have with us and if you, have, you expect to complete your case in 30 minutes. So uh, the reshuffle agenda, uh, we're going to hear first 22 Beverly Road, uh, Carol or Marty Millman. Wow, well seated. Mr. Millman, I presume? Yes. 
Okay. No, you're welcome to grab a seat just uh, real quick here. Do you have any uh, experts with you this evening? Attorneys, uh, architects? Uh, uh, no. No? Only myself. Flying solo. Okay, yes. excellent. You think 30 minutes should do? Won't even take 30 minutes. All right, I like that. All right, next we're going to hear uh, James and Claire Kane, 610 Springfield Avenue. Hi. Hello, Mr. Kane. Hi there. Uh, yes, I have uh, Jack, the architect, with me, and that's all it's time. Okay, one architect, that'll do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then we're going to start at the top of the order after that. We'll go up to 75 Tulip Street. Mr. Papeo. How you doing? Hello. Uh, so I have two people with me, uh, my architect and engineer. Okay. And I, I have no idea how long it's going to take. Right. Let's shoot for 30 guys. minutes. There's, there's, <laughs> there's, one minutes. there's only one answer to that question, by we, the way. Okay. By the way, we guessed, and that's why we modified the <laughs> order of the agenda. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then next, we hope to hear 22 Dogwood Drive. Collins. Oh, behind us here. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um, I have some phones. All right. And I think we will be done in 30 minutes. Okay, excellent. And then last but not least, 19 Oak Ridge Avenue. Hello. Um, I have an architect with me, Jack, and uh, I hope it takes 30 minutes or less. Jack is hoping the same. He's going to be here all night otherwise. So. <laughs> Jack the architect. Jack the architect, right? It's going to be a children's <laughs> book. <laughs> architect. All right, we're waiting just for our uh, board engineer to show. Do you think we should start or maybe take a quick recess? I think we should start. We should Can start. we uh, maybe take care of some of the... Post stuff. Oh, that's good. Fine. Ahead of time, like the resolutions and let's do the extension that. and all that stuff. Bear with us here for a few moments. We'll do a little bit of our administrative work, and in that time, we hope our board engineer to have joined us. Okay. Do we have to clear the room? Uh, no, we're just going to vote on uh, resolutions for memorialization. Okay. Okay. Yes, go for it. Hit it. All right, so we have a resolution for denial for fr 14 Franklin Place. That's BL 3401, lot 19, BB-22-2170. The eligible voting members are Chairman Spur, Vice Chairman Steiner, Mr. Mollen, Mr. Gonzalez, Ms. Toth, Ms. Sager, Mr. Feskins, and Mr. Hugo. Would someone like to make a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Chairman Spur? Yes. Vice Chairman Steiner? Yes. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Mullen? Yes. And that's it. The motion carries. Thank you. I feel like that was a bit of an intimidation tactic for our applicants tonight. Start with a <laughs> denial, but anyways. <laughs> Each case is heard separately. <laughs> That's all marriage. That's right. right. <laughs> uh, the next one we have is a resolution for extension. That's 129 Rich Wittridge Road. That's block tw 2502, lot 21, ZB-22-2128. The eligible voting members are Vice Chairman Steiner, Mr. Yuko, Ms. No Ms. Newell, Mr. Malay, Mr. Loikitz, Ms. Toth, and Mr. Gonzalez. Maybe before we just we vote on that, I, do you think you shared the correspondence with everyone, or was it just with me? I don't know if everyone had a chance to read it. Anyways, very shortly, this is the first request for extension. Um, out of the kindness of this applicant's heart, they're not going to tear their house apart while they're senior in high school. They're still resident in the home. They're going to wait until they begin college. So. They're trying to buy an extra year to hopefully have a little bit of quiet on the home front. So they have to be some very thoughtful reason yeah. for extension. Extension should be liberally granted. It's nice to have a proximate reason. And if they gave you one, you're good to go. They did. All right. We can proceed. Thanks, okay. Stephanie. Yep. Would someone like to make a motion? So moved. And a second? Second. Okay. Vice Chairman Steiner? Yes. Ms. Newell? Yes. Mr. Gonzalez? No. Mr. Malay? Yes. Mr. Loikitz? Yes. The motion carries. Okay. Do we want to do the minutes too then? Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. So the minutes for approval, uh, we have May 15th. Can we conduct a voice vote for the minutes but exclude the members who were absent that evening, which were Mr. Malay, Mr. Loikitz, and Ms. Newell? Would someone like to make a motion? I think I was also absent, so. We were? So moved. Okay, and a second? Second. 
left. Yeah. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Good. You know, the zoning study. law actually allows you to approve resolutions with only one vote. It really throws people off. There's an actual law that says that. Oh, How do you Fair. second that motion? You don't. You just, you <laughs> you just don't. move it. <laughs> I approve it. Yeah. All right, then let's dig in. Let's do some zoning here. We'll start with 22 Beverly Road, Tara and Marty Milne. Mr. Chair, I'm going to refuse. Enjoy the lobby. The record show Mr. Mr. Mullen has recused from the application. Where would you like uh, this people? You're in the right spot. There. So raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm testimony about the given this matter? Is that what you do? Yeah, you do okay. the swearing. Do you swear or affirm that testimony about the given this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do swear. And State your full name for the record. Spell your last name. Uh, Martin Henry Milliman, 22 Beverly Road. Spell that last name. M-I-L-L-M-A-N. Thank you. Tell us a bit about your application and we'll ask us uh, some questions. Seven years ago, we bought this house on Beverly Road. Uh, 1964 split level. Um, oh, by the way, I should say that my wife is here supporting me. Very and smart. Our, nice. our application. <laughs> I wanted my kids to come there and uh, they have a day off of school tomorrow. I'm sorry, pardon me. Uh, sixth grade at LCJ SMS and fourth grade finishing at uh, Washington. So we bought this 1964 split level from the executor uh, of the widow, widow who had been living or had been living there for decades. The house was well kept, but a lot left to be desired on the exterior uh, and on the in interior as well. Um, there was a passion project we, uh, with the help of Yuval Wellish here, uh, who is not here and he just happens to be here for another uh, application. We, um, I'm, I'm a licensed architect in state of Texas. I do not practice anymore. So we collaborated and evolved throughout the house and we ended up with uh, and I think I heard Mr. Galvin and Stephanie whispering. Uh, do we have these photos? No, I don't. can send them to you yeah. right after I'm going to need the boards though when you're done. You though. can have yeah. them. You know, what, what I was whispering to her in case any of the architects or professionals, we got these beautiful television screens. Why wouldn't we submit stuff in advance so we can pop it up on the screens? I'm an, I'm an old school analog guy. Yeah, I know, but I, spare Stephanie's I, desk all, space, you know. Yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll send them we'll, to we'll okay, right after. You're fine. We'll I can, I can actually send the deck right now to her if you want. Anyway, we ended up, we added a uh, second level here for, or additional level for uh, master bedroom. We were um, careful to show restraint in our development. Um, our renovation was modest stuck to the existing floor plan or uh, footprint of the building, built all as of right, uh, and believe that we tastefully improved the quality of life uh, on our end of Beverly Road. By the spring of 2017, we had our construction permit at hand. We self-performed the work with a close friend as construction manager, Cost Plus. We know how to get work done, and in five months, we had moved in. Um, exhibit three, at the time, At the time, we knew if we had built the deck that we wanted to, we would have to come in for a, uh, a variance. And we were living at Tara's parents' house in Wachung and didn't have time for that. So we essentially built a walk-off from the um, back kitchen great room sliders, knowing that we would come back in and, and ask for a variance for a larger deck so that we can have an eating space and, and enjoy our backyard. We do, but I think we're. I think in this, if for the speed, yeah, as a moment, we're going to complete this, and then we'll mark all these we'll in yeah. one shot. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, a SketchUp rendering of the deck. We're asking for an increase of the, um, the floor area from 18 percent. Right now, we're a little bit above 16 percent, up to 20 percent. The that 2 percent over 18 
co is constituted by about 220 square feet of deck. The deck, we do a walk off three level, uh, three stairs, and the deck ends up being under 30 inches above grade. So we've done everything we can to minimize the impact to neighbors and anybody to the side and behind us. Uh, we don't, we're not asking for any other variances. We're within our impervious cover, although as a requirement of this, we're going to be adding a retention tank, a thousand gallon retention tank. Um, we're within all setbacks. It is to 40 feet from the rear setback line. How big is the patio? The patio is about 650. I'm not sure the 650 square feet. I don't have the exact number. I mean, the whole focus is about the patio. How yeah. big is it? You know, why do you need it at this size? You know, could it have been smaller? Yeah, and so it needs to be this size in order to get a dining table up there, our grill. That's the deck. Oh, the patio? The patio isn't in question here. Okay. It says the, pati the patio is contributes to impervious cover, which we're below the 35% allowable. Okay. Just building coverage, I got it. And that's it. Have you had an opportunity to review Krista's memo or comments from the other advisory groups? I have. The, um, the only comment, so John Linson mm -hmm. had comments that we put some screening up about. Uh, How do you feel about that? Evergreen, Evergreen Hedge? We would like to, uh, we're asking that that be stayed or that not be a requirement of this project. Our intent is to build privacy fences on, or some combination of shrubbery and privacy fences on all three sides. That'll be in, in the next phase within a year or 18 months, and we want to do that holistically and do it once. So we're respectfully asking that that, uh, yeah. that not be a requirement of this variance. Could you describe maybe then just for the record and the purpose of the resolution, the privacy fence height, uh, material, color? Yeah, we, we would like to do a um, horizontal board, six foot privacy fence okay. all around the property. All here. around the property. And the anticipated completion of that, what do you think that next phase will work? After next year's bonus. After next year's bonus. <laughs> okay. She wants it now, so. I know. <laughs> she'll, she'll, She's, she's probably she more of a threat than we are, ago. but yes, we're grateful to have the, her on um, <laughs> there, there were comments uh, from Colliers. My, I discussed them with my engineer. Well, I discussed them with my civil engineer. He was drawing them as of Thursday. Today he's gone missing. Mm -hmm. So we will, we will resubmit the uh, civil with all of the drawings requested, or the so updates requested. So you will requested. comply with the engineer's letter? Yes. The, um, one of the items, uh, they were asking about grading. We have no grading changes. We're going to slope a quarter inch per foot away from the house, um, put in the tank, and I just need to get that drawn. I have my own markup of that if anybody cares to see it, but I don't know that anybody cares to see that. Yeah, no, as long as you'll stipulate to uh, what's included in the, in the engineer's letter and then naturally yep. abide by whatever rules the city has with respect to engineering, grading, what yep, have you. Of course. Uh, those permits, then we feel pretty well covered in that respect. Okay. There, um, I think that was it. Okay. Not to put you on the spot, Dipti. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Good. Apologies we, for the delay. We we didn't get this far into the agenda. We actually reshuffled the order oh. here, so don't don't worry. We didn't okay. actually get. I was it. like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The, yeah. the new deck, the new deck and steps is actually uh, 462 square feet. 220 of that are over the 18 percent. So it'd have to be half the size. It wasn't work. We, we knew that we couldn't do it and get like a dining table on mm -hmm. as of right six years ago. So that's why we're back here. So this is 22 Beverly. They already stipulated the engineer's letter. Is there anything you wanted to draw particular attention to? Yeah, regarding the stormwater drainage. Yep. You, you can, yeah, no, ahead, pull it up. No, no worries. Problem. He said there was none. <laughs> <laughs> There was some. <laughs> I, I mean, I could go off the memory, but. <laughs> no, it's okay. Pull up, take a moment, pull it up. No problem. Because I think beside the engineer's letter, Mr. Linson's comments. Yeah, and the there's nothing else, letter. really. I have, the applicant has one year from a certificate of occupancy to submit a landscape plan to the city forester or install a privacy fence. Okay. Okay. 
screen is right. We'll give you some room yeah. to run, but generally, as I recollect, we're very concerned with the impact on neighbors. And we love our neighbors. We would like nothing more I know. than we'll to screen sooner. ourselves. Maybe you'll get a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, one year Tomorrow. for a planner. For I would like to extend that to sooner than later. Well, I put it from the CEO to give them to actually give them more time. If you want me to do it from the building permit, that would short. That would be good. Okay. All right. Tiffany, do you ever pull up your notes? Yeah, yeah, and okay I, with the, yeah, and I can I can get a plan and and. Not plan not in early not, not and then do the work yeah. when it's appropriate over the summer, right. that sort of thing. Informally put a plan before and yep. yeah. Not yeah. conditional okay. uh, Well we don't know what he's gonna pull a building from now. So right. as soon as possible or else I, know, I will but be divorced. The is you have time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not getting this resolution for thirty days, so you're not doing it within the next yeah. thirty days. My drawings are prepared. Um, they're going to get updated a little bit, uh, my architectural drawings, and we'll be ready to submit as soon as we get this in 30 days. Okay. All right, Tiffany, did you have anything else you want to draw attention to I or elaborate? I want to make sure I understood what's happened. Number one, and the revisions per the engineer's letter will be um, yep. provided. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. You did this. Uh, okay. That's, that's my mark. You didn't miss much. On this this morning. I okay. Didn't. okay. <laughs> so, his engineer sure. didn't get back to him, so he doesn't know what he's, he's going to do. Okay. So, what we asked him is if he would agree yes. that, he, yeah. that he'll comply with your engineering report. And he said yes. Okay. All right. I have no problem complying with all the comments. You can light him up. <laughs> no problem. Um, and, um, okay, so then we have. I think there was a discrepancy between the lot coverages per our report. Is, has that been discussed already? No, go ahead. Um, so the uh, lot coverage increase was um, 1098 square feet per the plan, the grading and drywall plan. And then per the proposed deck and patio plan, the lot coverage increase was 1038. Just wanting to make sure that. Okay. Yes. I will uh, bring that up with the civil engineer. Okay. Who his, uh, his deck plan is sure to be less accurate than the um, than my uh, zoning. For the purpose of the resolution, though, I presume he's... The engineer is not here, I assume. Engineer is not here. But I for the purpose of the resolution, he's submitting for approval of the larger, I suspect, the two numbers. The way I see this right now is going to comply with with our engineering letter. So any discrepancies have to be resolved. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that can be done in the next 30 days and should be. Uh, can you, what, what um, note is that? What note number is that? 10. I'm trying to help you with this piece. Note number 10, it okay. should be on page two. At the bottom. Yep. I'm just saying, you guys are gonna work. If it makes a difference, if you think it makes a difference in our determination of the variance, we should spend time on it. If it's something that they can comply with, and I think we should bring it to a conclusion. This is to clarify what is the actual increase, and that should be provided with the, the Wait, corrected. Wait, text the, the actual percentage of yes, the calculation. Exactly. Yes. Okay, and this is the lot coverage, which isn't in question, which isn't right. for the variance. Right. So we'll make sure that the lot coverage yeah. is So it complies either way. way. Yeah. Yes, and it complies then, either way. I think the other last thing I would I would bring up is about the limit of disturbance that needs to be provided on the plan. Yep. So everything you said you've been yeah. said, you will comply with. Yes. Okay. It should be drawn already. Yes. <laughs> if I try. Yeah. There's. I have no problem with any of this. And also, Krista had wanted me to attest that um, since the original survey, nothing had changed and nothing has changed. Any questions from members of the board for the applicant? Can you Good. just confirm the deck size again? The deck size, the final deck size will be 462 square feet. Okay. You know what the length and width are? Ye about 20 by...
20 feet by 22 feet, plus a little overage for the stairs as they waterfall out. Okay. Scott, Molly, any other questions for our applicant? Then I'll ask any members of the interested public here for this application. No? Okay. I think we're all applicants in the audience tonight. Anything you'd like to say in conclusion? Uh, no, just, you know, we, we want to um, build the deck for the quiet enjoyment of our backyard and the space and should be a benefit to the neighborhood and okay. those who come over to eat my barbecue. All right, fair enough. <laughs> All right, and then the only condition we have is noted is acceptance of the engineer's letter and the landscaping and or privacy. So plan. two. Two, okay. Right, and all of the exhibits we provided, we're going to put them over there and we're going to mark them A1 through A4. Is there four of them in total? Yeah, I mean, this is a four and a half, but this is going to be, I'm going to give you a real civil. This was my marker no, for you my should, civil. You, that's, you can have it. Yeah, but. mark them. If you could, once we get done with your case, just sit quietly and mark them A1, A5, and A1 through A5, and then leave them over there and put your name on them. Okay. Okay. So with those two. Like this afternoon, we got a drawing on 22 Beverly. Stephanie. Stephanie, uh, late this afternoon, we got a drawing on 22 Beverly. Is that yeah, the drawing you're talking one? about? I think that's the original that I sent to you that, that the comments were that, the, I, I believe we were told it was a revised version. I thought, yeah, I had thought you made some revisions on it. No, this isn't the revision. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I, 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 I got confused when I got new today and then yeah, them I'm referring sorry. to old ones. That's okay. the original to which the, the Collier's comments are on and were updated. Okay. So, okay. Everybody comments. forget what you got. Forget what you got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's begin deliberations then. Uh, who'd care to start Condi us off? Conditions. Liz? Uh, we know the conditions. Two, complies with the engineer's report and the applicant has one year from the issuance of the building permit to submit either a landscape plan to the city forester or to install a code compliant privacy fence. All right, Liz, hit it. So, I remember the house when it was 10, so it was a nice improvement for the new one. Yeah. And uh, Thank you, it's a modest addition, um, at the comfort of your home. And with the addition of the fence later on, that will be even perfect. So I would be prone to approve this application. Thank you. Would you care to add, subtract, multiply? Basically, they're covering everything we need done, uh, especially handling the drainage, if that's a problem for any of the uh, Mm -hmm. any of the next door neighbors and uh, taking care of the, uh, the privacy. I, personally, I prefer the vegetation to a privacy fence, but um, I know what you're doing. You're acquiescing to your wife, which I think is exactly what you should be doing. And, <laughs> I'm looking, and we've seen the nod from her side that she wants it sooner than later. So uh, I, I think this is a, an easy application to uh, endorse. I would concur as well. Storm management improvements are welcome. Privacy, whether through privacy fence or the hedgerow, um, is appreciated. Um, I think also the addition of the, the deck will make for safer ingress and egress and just better utility of that space in the rear for visitors for barbecue or just family enjoying a quiet afternoon, hopefully out back. So for that, um, with the conditions noted, I too could support the application. Do we have a motion to approve? Uh, with, again, the conditions, the two conditions noted. So motion moved. To. Second. Second. I'm sorry. We'll give it to Scott for the first, and Liz can have the second. Don't fight over it. I don't want to fight over it. There's a few cases. It's all good. Okay. Vice Chairman Steiner? Yes. Ms. Newell? Yes. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Malay? Yes. Mr. Loikitz? Yes. Chairman Spur? Yes. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just mark those as exhibits for us and leave them on the side if you could. All right, next up. We're going to move to, what did I say? Where's my notes here? Sorry, I've got You've all got these agendas. So confused. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Let's go to 610 Springfield Avenue. We've got Mr. Mullen. Yeah, that'd be great if you finish. Thank you. We're going to swear you in. Yeah. Wait till me. Oh. Wait, wait till our. He's not in yet. Or? He's not back yet. Oh, I'm trying to be expeditious. To see what Mr. Wallace talking. 
Testimony about the this matters the truth, the whole truth, and that's but the truth. I get it. Do. Applicant first. State your full name for the record. Spray last name. Uh, James Charles Kane, K A N E. All right, and your honor. Jack Kelly, licensed architect, Bruce Kelly Conway. We accept Mr. Kelly's credentials. We do. Welcome back, Mr. Kelly. Welcome back, Mr. Sparrow. Thank you. <laughs> You're allowed to be here today? I'm allowed to be here today. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Kane, okay. have you begin? Okay. So just offer us a brief introduction, what you're looking for here, and then we'll let your architect do all the heavy lifting for you. Okay, all right. sounds like a plan. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm James. Uh, my wife, Claire, and I, Claire's at home with our two boys tonight, um, uh, but equally keen to, to see things progress as our former uh, people. Uh, we're looking to do a small uh, deck on the side of our property at 610 Springfield Avenue. Um, and it's pretty well as simple as that. I think it's um, slightly over the amount required for variance, so, which therefore requires a variance. So we, um, hence, uh, that's the application that we're making today. Thank you so much. Excellent. All right, any questions for the applicant? And then just to check quickly, is there any member of the interested public here this evening for this application? None. All right. Mr. Kelly, wow us. What do you got for us? Well, I have a small deck on the right-hand side of the house. Okay. Um, the Keynes property is a corner lot, so it has two front yards and two side yards. So we're here for one variance for a front yard setback. For a uh, slight overage over the front yard setback requirement for, the, for this new deck. Um, the requirement is a 30-foot setback. Uh, we're providing 27.6, so that's a variance of 2.4 feet. Um, the actual amount of the deck that's over the setback is 14 square feet. If you look at the site plan drawing, you'll see a tiny little triangle of the deck, which is the overage on, the, on this setback. Um, we chose to do a deck because their Kane's house is, the first floor of the house is one story out of the ground. So we chose to do a small deck. It's only 246 square feet. Basically just large enough for a table and chairs so that canes can eat outside or sit outside if they want without going down 14 steps to the ground. Um, the reason why we did not, if anyone would like to know, if the reason why we did not put the deck around the corner, so to speak, in the rear of the house, they have an unusual situation. They don't have a garage. The house has never had a garage. It's over 100 years old. And there never has been a garage that we know of. So they have a driveway on Springfield Avenue and a second driveway entrance on High Street. Um, so the driveway cuts through their backyard. So a patio on the ground is really not an option here. Or like attaching the deck to the rear of the house uh, would require moving all of that driveway and really limits their back the usability of their backyard. They do have two young boys and they do use the backyard uh, to play. Um, also, it's a little bit of a safety thing for them because rather than backing out onto Springfield Avenue, um, they tend to either drive in from Springfield Avenue and leave on High Street or drive in from High Street and leave the other way so that they're never backing out onto any, either one of those streets. So it's a rather small deck. It's, uh, I think it's a nice improvement for them. And we're slightly over the front yard setback by a little bit more than two feet. And it would have made the deck less functional if you had cut it down to be compliant. Yes, I think so, because I'd have to, I'd have to, even though it's just a little triangle, I would have to take about three, three foot portion away from the deck, which would render it almost useless. It's a good idea. Okay. Um, you had an opportunity to review the comments, not just of Krista, but of the... Um, I think there's one comment from Krista, uh, and that is that there's an air conditioner right where we're proposing the deck to be built. Mm -hmm. So we'll move the air conditioner around to the back, and so... Will that be in a conforming location? Yes, okay. that'll be conforming. Okay, that answers that question. 
There was a question about the number of stories of the house. Uh, our, one, of, one of the documents we submitted had a typo on it. So it is a three-story house by definition. It does have a third floor, and it does meet the building code definition of three stories. That really doesn't have anything to do with the deck, but it's just a clarification. Okay, excellent. I think that was only Krista's only um, comment. She did mention a grading permit. I'm not sure that that will be required. Um, not really changing the grading. We're, we're going to dig three footings for the deck. We did try uh, one other thing. Um, I'll just point out. It is over 100 years old. 100 year old houses don't have decks, typically. It does have a wraparound porch, which is a 100 year old version of a deck. So we are going to we are going to uh, do our best to to marry the new construction with the existing house. The existing house is wrapped in vinyl siding, which is not helping either green vinyl siding, if any of you have visited the house. Uh, I would love for Mr. King to take the green siding off, but one job at a time. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what we'll find underneath it, for one, for one thing. But we're going to support the deck on stone piers because, uh, as I said, his foundation is um, uh, first floor is story out of the ground, so you see the stone foundation. So I think it'll be compatible with the house, and, and uh, it'll look nice. Excellent. Uh, just if they give you the opportunity for these egregious 14 extra square feet, anything <laughs> trigger you, lost sleep, anything of concern? Um, I have only one comment that I would like to present. Sure. The, yep. Because you mentioned the grading permit. Mm -hmm. um, the applicant has not provided limited disturbance, so... Um, you have mentioned just now there's no grading really, and it's those just putting, and so it's those silt fans, any erosion control measures sh should be around that area of work. So what sure. yeah. do yeah. we need a condition? Do we need? Just uh, comply with that, yeah. Comply with what? With the engineer's report, and, okay. and then um, comment number 12, which is any silt fans and all your uh, erosion control measures should be around the limit of disturbance. Yeah, that's not a, yeah. that's no problem. Okay. Paragraph 12? Uh, paragraph 12. Okay, got it. Yep. Okay. Okay. So, Dipti's good. Any questions from the board? Just one quick question out of curiosity. Is this project subject to DEP review because of the proximity to the creek? No. We had looked into that because they were considering building a garage um, in, the, in the rear somewhere. So we didn't get very far on that. We did hire an engineer to take a look at that, but we never got his really got a report from him as to what my what the buffer might have to be from this brook. Uh, but you know, the garage would be back here somewhere, which is it's going to present issues. Right. Uh, this is seventy-five feet away, so I think we're fine. We're we're out of the the required uh, any required buffer. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Scott. Questions? No? I'm just happy. Cool. Uh, that actually brings up a couple of questions. Those are current regulations for DEP as of now. If we were to prove this variance and there's a possible uh, re-examination of DEP rules within the next year, are we allowed to revisit that or not? No. Okay. No. The general uh, rule is once you, if you get an approval, it's actually the time of application rule. When they submit their plan, even if the EP regulations had changed since they filed their application, it would be incomplete. Even though we, we carry jurisdiction for two years of water? No, we don't, we don't do that in every instance. When we do it, when we do retain jurisdiction, it's because we're concerned about a flooding issue caused by the proposal. In this case, you're concerned about the water rising and as long as, long as they're, that, the house itself doesn't have to be elevated, so the deck, and the deck is, and the deck is elevated. The deck is so, elevated, yes. Yeah, so. You know, uh, should, it's, it's there, it'll be in better shape than the house. How, what's the, and now, I can't tell from a flat photo, but is the backyard sloped down to the water? Slightly, yeah. So should we specifically waive jurisdiction just in case so that we don't have no, an issue with okay, the boat? we don't have to do Okay. Okay. No, everything, everything that you do, everything that we do, is subject to outside agency approvals. 
I am confident in this case that nothing else additional is required. Fantastic. All right. Mr. Kelly, anything further from you? No, nope. I think that's it. Mr. Kane, anything you have to say in conclusion? Uh, no, but thanks for considering the application. Well, excellent. And then I'll note again, there is no member of the interested public here to comment in favor or in opposition. Um, Mr. Spur, all of this is filed, so nothing is here, nothing is new. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, I believe just the engineer's letters are only condition. Uh, and that the AC, wherever it's placed, is going to be in a conforming location. location. Yes. yes. And meet requirements, right? Sometimes it's got to be screened or whatever. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Who would like to begin deliberations then? Scott? Sure. Um, I think this is an entirely reasonable proposal. Uh, I would agree to, to meet with the current setback conformance would render the deck useless. Uh, it's a very small ask. So with that, I can be in favor of this project. I'm in favor too. Uh, I think it's a, it's a minimum change here. The variance required is not that uh, uh, hard to accept. And I think it will give a nice uh, curvy view for the house and that corner. So I support. I'd like to point out the site conditions as they exist do present somewhat of a hardship it being a corner lot that we all are very familiar with and also the unusual driveway and uh, frontage on a very busy road. So I think this, doing it this way does enhance the overall safety uh, to, the, to the motoring public. Well said. well said. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. I, too, could support the application. It is definitionally modest, um, suitable for the property, uh, adds a certain aesthetic benefit, um, and I was particularly taken uh, by the public safety benefit, uh, which is awfully compelling for, for my support. So with that, uh, and the conditions as noted, do we have a motion to approve the application? So moved. Second. second. Mr. Millay. Vice Chairman Steiner? Yes. Ms. Newell? Yes. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Mullen? Yes. Mr. Malay? Yes. Mr. Loikas? Yes. Chairman Spark? Yes. The motion carries. Thank All you right. very much. Welcome, Mr. Kane. Thanks, everyone. All right, the top of the order 75 Tulip Street. Nice easel. Someone's making off on rental cost fees here. All right. So you're easel? All right. <laughs> All right. Mr. Papeo. Yes. We're going to swear you in. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you have to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your full name for the record. Swear your last name. Anthony Papio, P A P E O. Thank you. Sure. Tell us a little bit about the application, and we understand you have two professionals with you. and. Take well, good carry, I'm sure. Sure. Uh, so um, I live in the house with my wife and, and two daughters, 13 and, uh, and 7. Um, basically, we're just looking for a variance to get a little bit more space. 13 year olds getting sick of sharing a bathroom with us. Um, I'm getting sick of sharing an office with um, my daughter's playroom and, and a bunch of guinea pigs. Um, actual guinea pigs, two guinea pigs. Um, <laughs> and so um, we're, we're just looking for a little bit bigger space. Um, you know, we, uh, we have a small yard as it is, and, and so. You know, we've, we've kind of thought about this for quite a while, and making it smaller to us is not really, um, you know, as much of, a, of a, a concern as having a little bit more space in the house, a real kitchen. I have an Italian wife who loves to cook, so um, hoping to uh, hoping get it done. Okay, excellent. Any questions from the board for our applicants? And then are there any members of the interested public here this evening for this application? Uh, who is the first uh, witness we'll hear then? Oh, who's the first guinea pig? First guinea <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. All right. We'll take it. I'm the Hello. Welcome. We're going to swear you in. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give this matter the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your full name for the records by your last name. Yuval Vell. Sorry. Wellish. W-E-L-L-I-S-C-H. Mr. Chairman, we accept Mr. Welsh's credentials. We've seen you for some time. I know. COVID and all that? Could you provide, yeah. provide three boards? That you've, I know you've appeared before. Oh, me. I've been here many times. Yes, but just provide, one, provide a couple boards recently. Milburn, Westfield, 
Uh, Morristown. There you go. Right, we've heard of all those places, and we'll accept <laughs> There's a lot more. <laughs> uh, for at least a decade or more. Okay. Yeah. More and more than that. All right. Tell us a bit about the, the application then, okay. from your perspective. Um, we're we're pretty, pretty much talking about a 100-year-old house, and I guess when they did divide the lots, it was only 5,000 square feet, and today they're asking for 6,000, so obviously most of the variances that we have are pretty much coming from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to do a little bit more, uh, add more to what you said. It's, it's a very small house, and um, it oh, what has... Is the, what is the uh, square foot? Five thousand. Oh, the house itself? Yeah. Right now? Uh, about 1,700, something like okay. that. Okay. A little bit less. All right. That makes your point. It will be, after the, after the uh, renovation and everything, only 2145. Okay. It's a three-bedroom house, and we will keep the three bedrooms. But the thing is that what Mr. Papio did not say, I know about the guinea pigs and everything, but the powder room in the first floor, when you open the door, you're in the kitchen. So it, it's really not what you want. And there's no family room per se. The living room is the dining room. Everything is together. So, um, I mean, you can look at the plan. Um, you can see the existing uh, in the last page. So I'll, I'll just run real quick. Oh, yeah, very small. The stairs over here, the stairs to the basement. You have to go through the kitchen. And there's a living room, dining room. They open to each other. With studies over here and everybody is there. The kids, Mr. Papio, everybody is at the camp. The bathroom, and the only bathroom, is practically like, a, like an airplane bathroom. <laughs> Seriously. Very small. And the refrigerator is on the other side of it. And it's not what you want. Um, the second floor, we have three bedrooms, but everybody is sharing one bathroom. And I understand from Mr. Papio, now there's a teenager involved, and it's a girl. It's always a problem. So, I don't know if I have only boys, but it's like not what you want. We knew when we started the project that there's going to be a problem. In other words, we have to go for a variance because the backyard is small, but it's the only option to go to. Oh, I forgot to mention, there is a full bath in the basement. You don't have to overdo the interior component, okay. only as it relates to the, to, the, to the variances. I'll go over my list. So what we're going to do is add 594 square feet okay. to the house. And the addition roughly is 29.6 by 9 foot 5. That is over here. The second floor goes on top, and so is the basement. Okay. All right. The first, first floor addition pretty much clears. I'm not going to go over everything, but it opens everything. Of course, we're going to use some structural measures to keep it open. But that's the only way to make a 2145 house look a little bit open. Um, on the second floor, most notably, we have a master bathroom now, which was never there before. We have laundry, which is now buried in the basement. And the kids have their own bathroom. Uh, make a long story short, I know we have like five variances. I read all the comments from Krista. We just don't have a choice. It's the only thing we can do. Uh, the only one thing that I want to mention, we're going to have a guest room in the basement, in the addition below, with an egress window, and the two air-conditioned uh, air handlers going to be right there. No issue with that, with the zoning. Okay. Um, there's an oak tree in the front, and Mr. For uh, Mr. Mr. Forrester, Mr. Mr. Winston says you should prune it safely. Can you do that? Sure, of course. That would be one of the conditions. I would leave also some room for my friend. Of course. Mr. Scott. Yes. Uh, go to the nitty gritty or some engineering. Any questions, just oh, real quick, sorry. Uh, from the board for the architect? Sure. All right. 
right. You're adding a base basement space? Yes. Adding so to the existing so you're, one. You're adding 21, 21, and 21? That's true. What else is in the basement? Right now? There will be a rec room, a what's guest now, room. What's going to be? Right now it's just a rec room and the laundry. And of course mechanical. What will be there is a bigger rec room, open up, a full bath, and a guest room with an egress. Okay, so we're adding a bedroom in the yes. basement. We are, but it's a guest room. It's not like we're adding a bedroom to the basement. We are. <laughs> so. Okay. We are. Well don't don't bedrooms have to uh, it has access to the exterior. Yes. You have whatever you as a legal for fire code purposes. Yes. Let me show you. So in the end, you'll have four bedrooms. Is that the technically? Yes. All right, no, not technically. We're going to treat it as four bedrooms. Four bedrooms. All right. All right here. space for the house so but that's not part of the FAR. Right. Mm. Right. Okay. No. Uh, and there's no plan to put a mini kitchen or any kind nope. of nope. Uh, because that could be a I understand. No mini bar no way to block off from up to upstairs and uh, rent it out and uh, you know, I, I, I know that's not it but how do we Yep. Right, as, as the variance travels with the land forever. Right, this is for the child. this is for the teenagers that are going to be using it? Exactly. Yeah. So if your teenager decides to stay closer to home and go to college nearby. I mean, she may even want to stay in the basement. Like, move the bedroom to the basement. Right, she may, and then at some point it might be convenient to add a gas line and a kitchen. Mm -hmm. We should have some sort of maybe condition that there's not Prohibit. to be any cooking elements, not to be, we could, we could say it. You can say no kitchen. Not, not no kitchen. To do that, so. yeah. well, right, that's not the intent, but yeah. it does run well, with the property. No, when, and the, the concern always, I, I get it, when it looks like, sometimes when it looks like a duck, it's, it quacks like it's a duck. Or it's not a duck now, but it might become, it might a, become duck. a duck. Yeah, right. okay. It could don't, become. Don't look for that. So we're, we're not, it's not to be any, no. not to be any, uh, Kitchen elements in the basement. No. How about that for a condition? Not There's not even a bar. So. Well, I well, we should, we should I'm not against drinking. <laughs> can, I, can we eliminate the bathroom elements? Well, I mean, then you got to, if you have, if you make a bar down there, then you got to go upstairs to go to the bathroom. I think it's safer to have the bathroom downstairs. Yeah, yeah, it's right it's also legal. Bathroom because if you're coming the in from outside and you want to make it a separate it, it, habitable it, it, unit. Right? It, it, you just don't want to make it a, uh, the uh, ability to have a, even a grandma suite out of it. You know, you Without them to, coming back it. here to make the argument. Right. 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 All right. No kitchen elements. In this no room. kitchen. Thank you. No problem. And, and it's not you guys. It's you know, next, the future. next future. owner. Right. It's a future owner. Yeah. Any other questions for the architect? Scott is chomping at the bit. Mr. Scott? I just want to say one yes, thing. Of course. We're going to re-side, re-roof, make the house look mm -hmm. good. Wonderful. It's 100 years old. So. Right. All right. Look forward to and it. And we get to keep it. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Did you, you have something with the architect? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I put my hand up. Sorry? No, that's okay. It's a lot covered. Would you be able to address but that? Mrs. Scott okay, will do no that problem. in okay. a minute. Yeah, he's the planner, so we got to give him a chance. All right. Mr. Scott, it's up to you. I'm going to keep it over here. Take it away. Raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm testimony about to give this matter as the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. State full name for the record. Spire last name. William Scott, S C O T T. All right. Do we accept Mr. Scott? We well, we've seen him most every meeting for the oh. past good couple of months. So it's great <laughs> to see you back, Mr. Scott. Thank you. <laughs> so um, there are several variances on the property, and most of them are directly related to this being an undersized. Uh, lot. We have uh, an existing condition um, for lot area, lot frontage, and lot width, all deficient, uh, which, all which contribute to the, uh, the variances we're requesting. Um, all of the work is done behind the home as you view it from the street. 
There's no expansion to the sides. So from the neighborhood, you, you'll have no idea this happened. Uh, no change to the roof height. Um, should I go, would you like me to go through the, the five well, variances quickly or, or you, you all have a I, good listen, feel for them? I think the, the argument in this case is that this house was built way before zoning. It's 5,000 square feet. The neighborhood is a 6,000 square foot uh, minimum. So, you know, and that the house needs to be bigger for the family to make it livable for today's day and age. Is that all true? I, I agree. Sure. Do, do, do you have, do you see this as a special reasons or hardship or both? Uh, I believe it's uh, hardships. What's your basis for that? Because of the uh, the shape of the lot, uh, the the uh, undersized area, um, the situation, the siting of the ha the existing house in relationship to the rear yard. Uh, it's closer to the rear yard than you would might expect to begin with. And from my, would, if would you would you agree with my contention that it's also a special reasons variance because one the the Revival of this hundred-year-old house will be attractive. So it'll be under Section I that'll be attractive. Certainly, I see. And the board is very concerned with preservation of the older homes, and this would be a and that would great be, example. That would be J for his, historic, as well. That yes. We're preserving this hundred-year-old facility. And what's the negative impact on the neighbors from this proposal? Uh, I don't believe there are any negative impacts. Uh, there's a decrease in impervious coverage of 91 square feet uh, proposed. So that should improve stormwater runoff negligibly. Yes, and again, you, this, you can't see this work from the street. Uh, behind the home, there's a, a wooded um, stream. Uh, and then behind that, there <coughs> is- Is it closer to <coughs> 75 feet? It is. Oh, and damn. I know, <laughs> <laughs> I was getting to that. And behind that is a, a rear yard of, of one of the homes that face on the, the adjoining street. So there's no uh, residence directly behind this house either. We would like to hear about the riparian issue. Uh, maybe sure. in a little greater depth just to satiate Ms. Anderson. Yeah, absolutely. So um, back in 2007, the state created the Flood Hazard Area Act, uh, which established the riparian zone on uh, regulated waters, which is anything with a drainage area of 50 acres or more. Um, we did take a look at the city mapping and um, was surprised to see the drainage area was around 250 acres. So this is a regulated water. Um, so we would need to proceed uh, with a permit by rule uh, with the state uh, DEP permit by rule program for this. Uh, we would be going under uh, permit by rule number four. Be very careful with those. <laughs> I've so been a lawsuit in Stafford on there are eight or seven. Five uh, requirements that must be met <clears throat> to qualify for that. The first being that the uh, addition is limited to no more than 300 square feet. Uh, this addition is 252 square feet. It's amazing how that happened. Huh? Luckily. <laughs> Um, it's required that there's no disturbance within 25 feet of the top of the bank. So if the board were to approve this plan, I would have to make a small modification to the limited disturbance of approximately five feet. It would have no impact on the actual improvements. It's just where I struck that line across the back of the property should be adjusted. That's this blue line establishing the, the site. Well, any approval will be subject to outside other agency approval. Uh, it's required that no portion of the addition be within the floodway. The FEMA mapping shows that the floodway is contained within the stream itself and doesn't uh, encroach onto this property. Uh, there's no clear cutting of riparian vegetation, uh, which is not proposed. And any disruption or uh, temporary um, disturbance of vegetation would need to be uh, replaced, which will be done as well. And the way this function is basically administered by the uh, design engineer uh, and it's my responsibility to uh, notify the DEP 14 days before uh, construction begins. Okay. Good information. So, very informative. Thank you, Mr. Scott. So, a question, uh, if I may. Yes, you may. Uh, so, we're talking about riparian 
right, which I believe is just waterways, right? Yeah, it's a pretty wide. Correct. The term riparian could mean anything involving water. Correct. And I'd like to bring up uh, questions about air, uh, which I believe the DP is looking to uh, regulate going forward, which may not touch on this necessarily right now, but it, is, uh, it does involve the removal of trees and, uh, I guess, canopy. And I guess it does touch on this to some effect, maybe not on your property, but I'd like to bring it up. Sure. Uh, is there <clears throat> some sort of mitigation of air flow and air rights that you are looking to mitigate uh, when you bring up riparian rights? Because I do believe it falls in the same sort of... You know, I've, I've, yeah. I gotta yeah. tell you, yeah. I, I'm like as cutting edge as you can get on all this stuff. I have not heard that before. Air rights? I know what air, I know what air rights are in a different context, and I know about the canopy, and I know in Summit we've done a great job of protecting the canopy. I believe that, so, I believe that uh, not necessarily, it doesn't have to do with canopy, it has to do with uh, riparian but above ground, air rights. But so again, we, it's not a rule today. It's not right, a rule which, today. Which means we can't consider it. I can bring it up though. Sure. So what's your, qu what's your, what's your question? Sorry, just for Mr. Scott. It, it has no effect on this application. Correct, but we brought up riparian rights, so I believe it might be wise to bring it up if it's a consideration but that, for your application. Riparian rights could affect this application. If we can't render our judgment based on any of the information that comes from that topic, then I'm not sure we're going to no, no, break but I'm that, I'm that I withdraw my question. But I'm always for no, learning, and yeah. we can dis we'll discuss it at some point. But the, uh, you know, I think that that I would say the one thing I really loved working. One of the things I loved when we were working here is we were so vigilant about the removal of trees. So I think that we we're. we're I think we should be able to easily comply if those regulations become evident. In this instance, they're asking us not to encroach into the into the waterway, so they don't want us doing anything. So I get the feeling that this wouldn't be an appropriate location to try to mitigate that. There are others, and you know, we've had people have taken down like like a 28 a 28 inch tree. It's like, oh my God, we're apoplectic about it. And what we used to do back in the day is we, you can't plant more than an eight inch caliper tree. So one of our kind of like ways to address that would be, all right, you got 28 inches coming down. We need, we need you to put up three trees or four trees to, to make up that loss of trees. Sometimes you can do it. Sometimes you don't have the room to plant them. So, uh, but we're, I think we're okay one, one on that topic. We, one point we haven't made. Oh, we haven't made them put it in to uh, public property. Right. Yeah. Okay. Or, yeah. or trees yeah. Yeah. along the right of way right. elsewhere. But <coughs> this case shouldn't be on that topic. All right, there's been some twists and turns. Dip, do you bring us back on course okay. for the engineer's letter? Anything you want to draw attention to? Yes, one main question I have is about the lot coverage. Just for our board and my understanding, there was a resolution that talked about <coughs> The approved lot coverage at 47.4, and that was decreased from 59.8%. And then the current lot coverage is 50.7. I, I think I just want to understand was there a change from 47.4 to the current, which is 50.7? What is that change? Would you have um, that information? I, I Are you following my question? No, there know. there was a prior application back in 20, uh, 2010, um, and at that time they calculated the impervious coverage at 47.4 percent. Um, today it is when we did our survey, uh, we had it uh, existing at 50.7, um, about two percent difference, and I can't tell you why. I can tell you that we measure very accurately. I don't know if it grew over time or if it was just, <laughs> I, you know, there are different methods of, of measurement depending on the scope of what, what you're doing. I don't the know, I'm not. The ruler versus the engineer yes, ruler? Yes, the curve ruler. <laughs> but um, I don't know the scope of that 2010 plan as well, so I don't know what was involved. Do you think involved. it's significant? Should we be concerned? Well, 
Well, the difference between 47.4 to 50.7 is 165 square feet, still less than <coughs> a 300 square foot um, uh, increase. So that is, they don't have to add in any uh, stormwater measures. I got a crazy so question. We could well, check the 2010 yes. records to see if the plan yes. looks the same. Yes. And then if there are different numbers, then somebody made a mistake mathematically. Yes, we could do an internal check, or have, if you guys have them, you can check and send us an email or some memo saying that you guys reviewed and checked it. Well, I mean, the bottom line is, are they correct at what their proposed percentage is? What's the proposed yeah. percentage? The proposed percentage is 48.8, which is a reduction from what's there today. Right. What we're saying is it might be an increase from what was there before. Right. Exactly. Right. It would but regardless, be, yeah, the way would I would say to the board is mm -hmm. if you generally like the idea of expanding this house slightly to make it just a little bit more room and you like the look of it, then I think you should feel confident. And don't Let's not worry about those percentages. It shouldn't exceed 48, whatever that is, for everyone. Okay. Anything else to be from the engineer's letter? Okay, and then we would just ask that uh, you accept uh, as a condition of the of approval um, the acceptance of the engineer's letter, all the all the conditions that she had noted therein. I, three things: comply with the engineer's letter. Yeah. Oak tree in the front yard is to be safely pruned. There is to be no kitchen elements in the basement. Okay. Well, just got anything else you want to add for you? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, I still have a question yes. here. Um, What's the extent of uh, the demo work on this property? Are you demolishing the whole house, or uh, okay. you're building it from new? So um, if you look at the plan, there's a drawing to the left, and uh, everything that you see shaded in green, which uh, is composed mostly of patio and um, a canopy that's back there, that will all be removed. Um, I don't doesn't appear that the house unit, the house uh, the will be uh, yeah, taken down. I mean, that would change this case. If, you know, we've had that in, in the past. Sorry, mm -hmm. guys. But no. I'd be very concerned if there were, you know, there were times when we had to be vigilant of that. Because mm -hmm. you're making a certain proposal, making a certain argument based on the existing conditions, and then you go and rip the whole house down. It's like, oh, wait a minute. We could make, you should be, you should be building in a compliant, more compliant way. Yeah, this is an ad addition to the, the home. It's not, a, it won't be demolition of the main structure. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. That's a great question. If you don't mind. Please. There will be self space. What's that? Nothing below it, though. There will be self space. Roof is just adding to the roof another roof. Oh, yeah, I'm talking about the primary the structure staying. Yeah. Thank you. So everybody is telling me on the record that the structure is set. What we, we have to worry about is occasionally mm -hmm. someone gives you proofs of this house has the following restrictions. You grant an approval based on those restrictions, and then through the course of building, they go back in and they trick the building department that we need to do this. And that's contrary to the proofs, because the proofs are always safe in the existing building. Part of why you're that's part of why I, I suggested Jay historic that you're mm -hmm. saving some historic fabric that's a hundred years old. But if you're not, that changes the proofs in the case. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Mr. Scott. Thank um, you. I believe that's your last witness, so that's correct, right? Anything you'd like to say in conclusion? No, that's it. Thank you for uh, your consideration. Uh, we ran through the, the conditions, but again, compliance with the engineer's letter, the oak trees to be pruned, and there's to be no kitchen elements in the basement. Um, I will note again, there are no members of the interested public here to comment on the application. Uh, who would like to begin deliberation? Um, so I think there are some significant hardships to the property. I think we went through them. Um, I think there is a benefit being rendered. One, most importantly, the usability and functionality of the home. We are preserving um, an historic structure. And you know, given, I think the, the plan is thoughtful. I like how the lot coverage is going down. You know, I, I can see you were making an effort to minimize the variances, even though they are 
fairly numerous. I think the, the, the difficulty of the site conditions make them numerous. So just g given all those efforts and the hardships that you have, and I think the, the site itself can accommodate the more intense use uh, associated with the increased FAR, I'm supportive of the application. Anything we could add to that? Otherwise, I'll bring us to a quick close here, um, only to note that, uh, yes, the lot is undersized for the zone. A location of the structure on the lot creates a certain hardship. Um, the site conditions are unique in terms of the inclusion of that brook, stream, river, whatever we want to re refer to it as. Uh, there's going to be clear aesthetic improvement um, to the property when, it's, when it is uh, fully updated. Uh, we appreciate your care and concern for that dear oak tree, so thank you for getting that pruned up. Um, and do appreciate, though it's minimal, uh, the decrease in impervious coverage and hope that adds clear benefit for you, your property and neighboring properties. So with that, I too can support the application. Would you like I, to add I, I, just, I just have one. Are we clarifying somehow whether this is an increase of 1.2% or a decrease of 2.7% somewhere along the line? Because I, I just have... Which way is this going? Because you're, you're, you're saying one of the main things is that we're decreasing. Or the but we may be increasing. Don't we need to know that before we do this? No. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think in this case. I don't think in this case you have to. I don't think it matters. I mean, wasn't it the sworn testimony of the engineer less than five minutes ago that they're decreasing? It is. Coverage? But... but but he doesn't know where the, all the numbers came from. But someone's math is wrong. Either the historical math is wrong or the current math is wrong. Or there's been a either change way, that though, we don't know. The, either way, though, like the existing condition, whatever it may be, the coverage is getting reduced. We just don't know what that starting number is. Well, the coverage is going to be X. We know what the yeah. coverage is going to be. Right. We don't know if it's a reduction or an increase. And we should bind it to that. I think you should treat it. We should bind it to X. It, binding it to X. You Find should treat it, it. I think you should treat it as an increase. But I, I think it doesn't matter because the net result would be the same. And, you know, we can get to the answer, but I don't think it matters if we have the answer. I agree. The variance goes to X, which is a number which is smaller than whatever Y would have been if we knew what Y was. Right? So the number is capped at X. <laughs> Just wish I, I just wish I knew how Y came to be. Well, we could. It's a smaller <laughs> number than what the variance is. Fifty is given. Fifty wants the answer too. Fifty. Yeah, what what is I the wanted, lowest number I that we can cap it at? I thought maybe we can question the engineer, of, of Mr. Scott, to give us clarity. If it was increased, would there be any impact with the DEP permit? Could we clarify yeah. this up before yeah, the resolution comes? Going to, but it's an outside no, but agency this is approval. An additional Sorry, let me, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah so the, the DEP permitting work doesn't have a component uh, related to that. We, we are decreasing what's here now. Oh. But if you were increasing it, it'd be different. Can we give a number now that we I, can we're, submit? We're, we're talking about, I, I believe, a number in the area of 160 square feet, give or take. It, no, it's a, it, it would be less than that, considering if you're going from 47.4, don't quote me, sorry. <laughs> that means my if, yeah, if you take our 90 okay. out of that. Well, no, no, so, let, let's quote you at the lower number. It would be 47.4 to the current or the proposed, which is 48.8. So that's about 1.4, yeah. 1. And how many square feet is that? Um, square feet would be, uh, let me do the math real quick, probably like, so we, both numbers are below so the threshold so where so it where could be something significant would be that required. was added that we don't know about. Even if it's de minimis, it's a number that we have to work on for the future, right? How about we do this? How about between now and when we, if the board was to see favorably in this case, that between now and the time of the resolution, the two of you will have a conversation and give us the correct answer for the sure. memorial. Sure. Put it into the record. Absolutely. They, so they, they've sworn that they've done accurate measurement of what's there right now. Or what it's going to be. What, and, well, they know what? that too, right? right. Because they've, right. Seen, yeah. they've done it yes. in CAD or whatever. Yes, so if we didn't have the old so application. Those are the two numbers that we should be considering right now, right? And it sounds, they sound confident that they know both of those numbers accurately. 
they know what it is now based on their measurements because that differs with what someone submitted a while ago. So what? Mr. Scott say. did the application 10 years ago, so. <laughs> mm. oh. ah. So no. plot thick. A plot thick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Well, that doesn't mean he, you know. It, are you confident that these two numbers are correct right now? Yes, those two numbers. The number we surveyed so is correct. So confirm that. You're going to confirm yes. that with you go back and look at the 2010 application and confirm. Which was not done. These two numbers. Not done by our office. Well, well good. I, oh, okay. 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 Well, could it, but it could also be the the your numbers on the application could be right, and what they built is wrong. Nobody's just measured them again. Yeah, so yeah. See, when he, he measured it, there's a gap. There's something wrong. He's there's something a, different. He's mentioning a record. That we do that not he had know. nothing. He had nothing to do with that. Correct. Right. 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 He has nothing to do with that mark in history. Let's He's giving us two numbers, which we're going to take him in his word that are accurate. Yeah, exactly. What he measured to be right now, which is existing, and what they're proposing, which they can figure out in the computer, right? And he's confident in the accuracy of those two numbers. Be a glass half full kind of worded. I'm, defer to the professional. I'm very so comfortable right. with the proposal for them to get together before the resolution. Excellent. And that's on the record, and they're going to spend the time necessary to right this wrong. I'm, this I'm sorry justice. for suggesting you got the math wrong ten years ago. Okay. <laughs> uh, when I have made mistakes, but I'm pretty confident on this on this particular <laughs> night. Off the record. You're not home. Relax. <laughs> the computers <laughs> weren't as good back then. All right. That's true. Thank you, Mr. Thank Scott, you. for rising again to address the point. <laughs> I move to approve this application. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> Forgot we already went through deliberations twice. Uh, do we have a do we have a second then second. to approve the application with the conditions as noted? We have a second at Scott first for Mr. Mullen. Okay. <clears throat> Vice Chairman Steiner. Yes. Ms. Newell. Yes. Mr. Gonzalez. Yes. Mr. Mullen. Yes. Mr. Malay. Yes. Mr. Loikas? Yes. Chairman Spark? Yes. The motion carries. All right, thank you. Let's take five minutes, cool our jets a little bit, and come back for the remaining <laughs> cases. Oh, thank you. Spicy.
that loosely. That's right. <laughs> All right, next up, we're going to hear 22 Dogwood Drive, Caroline and Dennis Collins. Good evening. Kindly Hi. raise your right hand. Do you swear a firm testimony about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Say your full name for the record, spell your last name. Uh, Caroline Collins, uh, C O L L I N S. All right, tell us a bit about the application. Um, so I'm here with my husband, Dennis. I want to make sure I introduce him. <laughs> um, we live at uh, 22 Dogwood Drive, obviously. We've been there for um, just under five years um, after moving to Summit from Short Hills. We lived there for 10 years. Um, we have three teenage children and two large dogs. And um, we love our Dogwood neighborhood and Summit. It's been very a great transition for our whole family. Um, our house is a 100-year-old Dutch colonial style home. It has great bones, um, but is definitely in need of some a few updates. Um, we recently did some renovations on our third floor and our second floor for our children's rooms and bathrooms, but now we're kind of ready to move on to our living space uh, for the family. Um, so we'd like to do some much needed updates to our kitchen and family room and um, our master bathroom. Um, we've been working with Kim throughout the process to help us rework some of our interior to make it more functional. Um, like many families, we spend much of our time in our kitchen and um, the small addition that we're um, trying to uh, put onto the back of the house will enable us to open up our kitchen and family room space um, as well as improve the flow of our home. In addition, um, we're hoping to make some improvements to the roof lines to restore some of the home's original character um, that has been somewhat lost in previous renovations. Um, the roof line adjustments will improve the aesthetic and appearance of the house, making it more historically appropriate and consistent with the style of the house, um, adding a gambrel roof in the rear and added trim. And then lastly, we'd like to add a patio off the back of our house with access from our kitchen. Um, as the existing patio, which is on the side of our house and is beautiful, it's just not conveniently located or conducive to grilling, entertaining, um, that kind of thing. Um, we live on an irregular corner lot and due to where the house lies on the property, um, we're requesting these variances so that we can do the proposed work. We don't expect the work um, to our home to affect any of our lovely neighbors and friends, um, and the rear and side of our yard is well shaded already by trees and mature landscaping. Um, Kim's here to give a additional commentary and explanations, and we're happy to address any questions you have for Dennis and I. Good Thank you. Very good. All right, any questions for the applicant from the board? And then are there any members interested in public here for this application? Just Mr. Kelly hiding behind the easel there. It's all right. Nice, nice to see you, Mr. Kelly. All right, Kim, we're going to swear you in, and then you can begin. Thank you very much. You swear a firm testimony about to give this matter as the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. State your full name for the record. Spell your last name. Kimberly Tone, T-O-N-E. All right. Mr. Chairman, accept. We accept your credentials. Yes, okay. welcome back. Caroline did a great job in introducing the project and some of the issues around it. Um, so it's a corner lot facing on Dogwood. This is V1, the, the drawings that were submitted with um, the application. Um, corner lot facing on Dogwood, fronting on Dogwood, and triangular on Hobart Road. So as the um, property goes back, it gets significantly narrower, which is essentially why we're here for some front yard setback variances from Hobart Road and the side yard combined variance for um, from the Hobart Road setback and um, a long dog with the side yard um, The project consists of a couple different parts. Um, we're doing a small addition of, of a covered porch on the driveway side, and we're shifting the mudroom so that it's more accessible. We're actually adding a mudroom. We're just shifting the entry so that you can get into the first floor of the house um, and have an actual mudroom space for the two dogs, and they're two large dogs. <laughs> um, two dogs and the, and the kids and the family. Um, room is moving over to where the current family room is, or den, which is on the side of the house. That right now has a hip roof on it. We're planning to take the roof off and um, turn that into the dining room, add a railing and a flat roof over there just to um, change the style of the, the roof and complement the rest of the house. The flat roof does conform to the amount of flat roof that you're permitted to have on the first floor. The setback to the um, existing dining, back corner of the dining room, here, back meaning closer to Hobart Road, is 30.9 feet. We have, um, at the 
existing chimney, we have, or at the proposed chimney, which is right here, we have a 30.4 foot setback. We have at the corner of the existing covered patio, which is, um, it's right now got a second floor over it, and that second floor is staying there. Um, we're not increasing the second floor in this area, we're just doing a one-story addition behind it, but this setback here is 32 feet corner of the addition that we're filling in beyond. We're going out about six, and a, six foot nine and a half or so beyond the back of the existing covered patio. And that setback is the 27.3, which is the closest of the building. That's what the, the variance paperwork says. And then there's a patio that's at the back of the house here that has a 23.8 foot setback. The combined side yard um, variance is for 30 feet on this side and the 27.3 on this, whereas 40% uh, is required. This is actually 35.4%. Um, where the existing is 60.9. So this is currently 30 and 30.9. We're going from that to 30 to 30 and then 27.3. Okay. And um, so the existing, what we're doing on the first floor is we're, in this, is a, this area right here is an existing covered porch. There's a, the master bedroom is currently over. We're filling that in and then adding a small, a six foot nine by about 14 foot addition at the back to open up the kitchen and plumbing together. The modern entry, the side porch is over here, the modern entry is through the side, and then this room here, is currently the den is being converted into the dining room. Um, to improve the flow a little bit, we're going to try to keep this patio as more of a formal entertaining, or it's, it's just a pretty space, um, and then connect with a walkway back to the new patio at the back. The um, exterior elevation, the house was added on to a couple different times over, I, I'm assuming a couple different times over the years. Um, and Right now, it doesn't read as a full Dutch colonial. This roof line here is trim that we're adding back to try to get the feel of the Dutch colonial to come back. So that right now, there's a shed roof back here, and it looks like the house was added onto. And it looks a little clumsy, I think, is probably a good word. So we're trying to fix that and restore some of the um, original character of the house on both sides. On this side here, which is the side facing Hobart, as well as on the, um, the other side, the mudroom side, the driveway side, we're extending and adding this piece of trim back here. At the rear of the house, we are um, modifying the, the primary bathroom and, and the addition that's the second floor addition that's over here. Right now has an asymmetrical a gable over the kitchen space and then an asymmetrical sort of gable popping out out of nowhere that doesn't really complement the style of the house. So we're taking that down and putting in a gambrel roof at the back to complement the rest of the house. So the reason for the variance, as I said earlier, are the irregular shape of the lots and the position of the house on the lot. If the house were, had been built closer to the street, it would have been closer to conformance and probably would have minimized the amount of the, the extent of the variance and maybe even eliminated them. So there's a significant amount. It's actually set back 44 feet as opposed to the 30, 35 that's required. So an additional 10 feet back here as it gets triangulated would have helped. So. Uh, Pat, the, the, looking at the reports other than engineering, there really weren't too many comments. The Environmental Commission had a list of things that they were looking for. Uh, have you looked at that? As far as um, permeable pavers, we haven't we haven't done anything with that or or the electric. Um, there, I don't think that you actually wanted to. You don't have any. We don't have lock coverage issues here, right? We have no lock coverage issues. We do have a clarification on lock coverage. There, um, the narrative actually says there was an additional 12 feet of lock coverage. Is actually and Andrew Clark's um, submittal has two separate numbers. One stating it's 200, and then one stating it's slightly less than that, like 150. It's actually 200. 
the, um, at the last minute before submittal, we actually added some patios and walkways because we wanted to make sure everything was included. Mm -hmm. So um, the number is the 5792. And in the comments, or in your comments, we, um, we looked at the right to provide, providing um, a list from Andrew how we get to that 200 square feet. I mean, generally where you comply with lot coverages, mm -hmm. it's not appropriate to start requiring, you know, drainage type reduction elements right. and permeable pavers are one of them. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, Dipti, is there, was there any concern on your part when it comes to stormwater impact? It, no. It, as she, uh, as right. the end, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, tone. 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 <laughs> tone. Um, tone. Tone. Her name is Tone. Miss Tone. tone. Discrepancy would just decrease the lot coverage increase. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. That's okay. okay. We I have no issues with stormwater. Anything in particular in your review letter that we should be aware of? Uh, it, as you said, there's not much on, on this from our um, So we would stipulate we would we'd ask the applicant to comply with the engineer's letter. This is a standard condition that's acceptable. Okay. Um, yeah, we didn't see really any other exceptional comments. Uh, Miss um, uh, Anderson did note a number of, I don't know, interesting observations to the architectural plans. Right. Um, I don't know if you care to comment about bathroom access through bedrooms. Well, so she, Krista brought up a couple things. She brought up that there were two other variances applied for. One was denied for a garage and a port sure. share, and then another one was applied for mm -hmm. um, for a garage in the side yard. At that point, um, right. the garage didn't conform, but now it even conforms to the way the zoning ordinance has been modified. Right. So the variance is granted anyway, but it conforms, conforms to the current variance, uh, okay. the current ordinance. And then, as far as her comment about the bathroom, um, we did renovate the the bedroom that's in the front on the second floor mm -hmm. to be accessed from one bedroom. The other room is used as an office, and um, it used to be a Jack and Jill, and I have a 13 year old daughter. Sure. Okay. And then the other room is the um, architect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, the Brady Bunch, there really were no toilets yeah. there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that, that was one question. Uh, we, I think we spoke a bit about the relocated dining room. Um, there was a concern about a drawing error on the pro's front elevation. Did you catch oh, that? The front elevation doesn't show the steps that are existing steps out of the dining room, but they're the side elevation shows the steps here. The front doesn't show them over here. They're okay. existing, and they're going to stay. So okay. And I think that, without going, there's some reference to an old survey from 1946. Um, some discrepancy between a 1946 and 1955 patio sizing. This um, it magically appeared. Right. This patio yeah. here. But 55, 46 to 55, there was zoning in Summit, but it predated the state's first zoning law, so who knows? It may have been done legally. Yeah, so it was. But it's a lovely space. It's there. It's lovely been there. Lovely post-war patio. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Okay, any uh, anything further you'd like to add? Um, no. no. Okay. Um, Dipti, we stipulated to your engineer's letter. Anything further you'd like to say? Nothing further. Thank you. No? Okay. Board, any questions for Miss Tone? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. If there are no members of the interested public here this evening, I believe Ms. Tone is your only witness. Excellent. Anything you'd like to say in conclusion? Thank you for your consideration. Excellent. All right. Good summation. All right, then. Uh, Mr. Galvin, we have only just compliance with the engineer's letter as the sole condition. All right. Who would like to begin the deliberations? Hardship. I was going to say, oh, please. It's, uh, if this helps, I think there was a good argument made about the hardship based on the placement of the existing. Joe, would you like to begin? Well, now, now, now that he took my line. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just say it again a little yeah, louder. Try uh, help. That's right. uh, it, it, it is a hardship. We need to solve it. I can support it. Okay. All right. Well, let, me, let me embellish a little bit here. Uh, this is an irregularly uh, shaped lot. Um, technically undersized, though slightly, uh, slightly per the conditions. The placement of the home uh, creates a hardship of sorts. Um, and aside from... Uh, there's a many kind of little benefits that we think accrue from this, but clear aesthetic improvements um, for where the home stands, the age of the home. Um, it's nice to see continued investment in it, and it should provide a clear aesthetic improvement um, 
even, over, even above its uh, current condition. So for those reasons, I could support it. And with the single condition as noted, uh, do we have a motion to approve the application as has been submitted? Motion to approve. Second. Second to Scott. Vice Chairman Steiner? Yes. Ms. Newell? Yes. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Mullen? Yes. Mr. Malay? Yes. Mr. Loikitz? Yes. Chairman Spur? Yes. The motion Thank carries. Thank you very much. Good luck with the project. All right. From Dogwood to Oak Ridge. Mr. Kelly and Mr. Gale. We're going to swear you in, Mr. Applicant. Sure. Raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear or affirm a testimony about to give this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. State your full name for the record. Spell your last name. Maxwell Alexander Gale, G-A-L-E. All right. And Mr. Kelly, we swore you in earlier and accept your credentials. Do you accept the credentials? I hope they haven't changed since these few applications. But uh, yes, we'll accept you again. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> All right, Mr. Gale. It's your case. you got to tell us a little about it first. Um, sure. So we moved to Summit, and we being my wife, uh, daughter, and I, and dog, uh, moved to Summit in January this year. And um, we have a young daughter, and she goes through just an insane amount of clothes. So right now our laundry is in the basement, and it's a lot of schlepping laundry uh, down two flights of stairs. And so we have a covered balcony on the second floor right now that we would like to enclose and make a laundry room. Um, but because of how the house is situated, it's just very close to the side yard, or there's very little side yard, I should say. So, um, yeah, we'll let Jack speak to the specifics, but we'd let just like to- Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Did you talk to your neighbor? Um, so I've tried multiple times. We have, we, have, we know that we've introduced ourselves at their number, but they are, so they have a house in Santa Monica where they spend half of their time. And they also are from Denmark and they're, daughter was just married and so they've been in Denmark as far as I can tell for like the last like month or so and I've texted them and like they haven't gone back to me. Is that the answer but you're looking for? Uh, Danish neighbors in Santa Monica have yeah. done <laughs> I know. There's, like, they were, when we met them they were like we are the worst neighbors. I know there's a joke there somewhere. I just don't have the, yeah, the I foundation wish for it. You, yeah. you attempted and they He's were unavailable. Available. I've I've gone there like every weekend. Like, I got a doorbell. joke about they have a ring doorbell. Birds, but I can't tell it. No, right. Right. Keep that off the ring. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you for the effort. Yeah. I could probably sit down. You could just do the whole case. Oh. <laughs> All right, we'll hear from Mr. Kelly then. Thank you very much for the interview. I was hoping you were going to tell me, they, you told them about this, and they have absolutely no problem. I think it's a great idea, but I, that's okay. I I could say that. You're under oath. That's all right. All right I sent them a letter. That's, that's, that's fine. That's all we're required to do. All right. all right, so we're here for one variance, as Max mentioned, and that's for side yard setback. Um, if you look at the survey, property survey, you'll see that this house is set back 3.7 feet on the left side, and it is set back 80 feet on the right side. So it is as skewed as far to the left as, as, as almost uh, uh, possibly could be. So uh, that causes a variance for us. Um, we're going to enclose this, we're proposing to enclose a second floor balcony. The setback in that location is 8.3 feet. And so the existing 8.3 feet and the proposed 8.3 feet are the same. Um, the gales really don't have any use for that balcony, so they like to make something functional there. As Max mentioned, we're going to propose that we put a laundry there. Um, there was commentary from Krista about the lot area. So we went back to the surveyor who did their survey. He included the right-of-way into the center of Oak Ridge Avenue in their lot area. Now, the reason for that, he told me, was because that is the way their deed is written. Um, we then went back to him and asked him if, well, I asked him for his CAD file, which he gave me. Uh, so I have filed this drawing with Stephanie last week, and Krista has modified her comments based on this drawing. So what we did is we calculated the lot area two ways. We used his area, which includes the right of way into Oak Ridge Avenue, and we recalculated it without way. It's not which is the correct way. Which is the correct way, yes. yes. 
regardless of how purposes, anyway. yes, regardless of how their deed was originally written. So our lot area is 20,313, uh, excluding the right of way area. It really doesn't have an impact on his variance because his variance is on the second floor. So there are no changes to the lot coverage or the building coverage. And I, as I mentioned, there's not even a change to this setback. We're maintaining the existing setback. There was a question or a comment about building height, I think, from Krista. Uh, this uh, uh, proposal has nothing to do with building height. Uh, the existing grade isn't changing, and the existing ridge line isn't changing. So we're just taking the one, that one balcony area and making it a room, right? Correct. So, you know, sometimes she throws in these comments. And so we don't mess up. So, so she keeps us on our toes, I guess. So here you see the existing balcony in the left-hand corner, a uh, rear corner of the, of the house. The setback line bisects that balcony, more or less. It, you know, the, the weird thing, you know, she would be, there would be merit to this argument if the eight foot was added at the first floor level, because then you might be changing the grit, the average grade. Wow. So it's cut. a thoughtful thing, but on the second floor, it wouldn't impact that. Correct. She even she even addresses her own comment. <laughs> she <laughs> she brings it up and then she discards it. Dis discards it. Like a Supreme Court judge, I guess. <laughs> anyway, we feel it's a it's a very uh, reasonable request. It really has uh, it's not visible from the street architecturally. Um, the balcony is there. There are two low walls enclosing the balcony, and we're really just making those full walls instead of half walls. Okay. So we'll match the stucco, we're going to match the windows. The Gales have already um, began their investment in this property by upgrading the heating and air conditioning systems. They're upgrading all the windows, they're going to upgrade the bathrooms, uh, and the kitchen, and I don't know what else, but we're starting with this. Well, actually we're not. He's, he already's the heating and air conditioning systems. Okay. Um, Dipti, we would naturally condition the uh, application on acceptance of the engineer's letter. Do you find that objectionable? No, a good answer. But Dipti, is there anything that's causing you concern? No, um, I have the same question regarding Chris's comments about the gift. The only other thing that comes to mind, it's really not in my memo, would you have additional utilities due to this laundry room upgrade? that point, any site work related to any potential no. utilities? No. Okay. I mean, we, we're, we'll be running plumbing and electrical sure. out there, but not, not, not underground. Right. Okay. No. Great. Thank you. All right, maybe a question for Mr. Galvin. Um, Krista did strongly recommend oh boy. the board include a condition that the property survey be revised to provide the lot area not included, including the area in the right of way. Can we do that? Do we want um, to? Honestly, well, honestly why, we're trying. The why we would like I'm it. trying. The surveyor is not all that cooperative. Oh. We're trying. I've asked him. To he thinks he's duty bound to the existing deed, and he's not willing to change. I have asked him, yes, and I've asked him if he could just indicate those two numbers on his property survey. That there's a dispute. I, I, I because, think because she's right, it's going to be an ongoing problem for the Gales. It'd be nice to resolve it, but also well, it'd be nice to get a laundry room in this balcony. That, this problem needs to be resolved. This is something that actually, it's beyond, it could be solved, but it's I, I, I have seen surveys over the years where the, the two numbers are shown. No, the other side, the, a simple way to do, a simple way to do this is not simple or inexpensive, but a simple way to do this is to deed the right of way to the city and then the official, uh, the official deed will change based on that. Yeah, See, yes. the, the bottom line, the, so that you guys all know that when the, any town has a road, most towns who have a roadway, they just created streets over existed, existing properties like this. Right. And then what happens is if a city vacates the street, unless the city owns the street, which is rare, it is in some cases, but in most cases when a city vacates a street, 
it normally goes back half to one side and half to the other side. So this, this property was conveyed prior to this road being here somehow. And so there was no consideration that this was a right of way. So there is a technical way to fix it, but I don't believe that we should be the fulcrum to cause this repair of this Fully technicality as well out Fully of portion. Yeah. What's being requested? For well, she again, she <coughs> answered her own question. That for this proposal, I don't think it's critical, but I think for them as the property owner, um, it needs to be. This uh, this might not be the place to decide yeah. that issue, whereas the request is like de minimis in the grand scheme of. Well, yeah, giving I'm actually, giving property rights to the, one person or the other. I'm giving them an answer, which is they should reach out to the municipal attorney, have a chat, and then maybe you, if you're worried about this impacting you in the future, then you would do a deed to the city to give them that little, or to give them the easement right to that. Or, or, or don't. Or, or when, they, when, they, when they move forward with their next project, find a surveyor who will do it both ways. Oh, hmm. I don't know. They, they probably won't do that either. I'm not sure. Well, if you've seen it, I've seen it. There's, time, there's a way to correct. Somebody to there's do. a way to do it. There's a, there, there, there's a solution. It's not for us to to cause the cause. Right. So that, that's the only question for the board. Does the board feel it's necessary to impose this condition? No. Andrew no, Clark, no, Andrew, no, Clark no, no. Right. Andrew Clark will do it. All right. Huh? Yeah. Andrew Clark will do it. Andrew Clark. <laughs> Andrew Clark. We it like is it. beyond our scope. Andrew Clark is an outstanding engineer. ABC. Experience. Okay. Wonderful. Um, anything further, Mr. Kelly, you'd like to add? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Interesting discussion of right of ways. I didn't know that. You learned something. Yeah, yeah. you learned yeah. something. Hannah, yeah. Hannah. 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 We don't have any creeks or rivers or streams. There's no rivers or streams? No. On an outbridge. All right, fair enough. Well, there is definitely some waterways. We're more concerned about teenage daughters. That seems to be the common theme this evening. You're safe for now. daughters only. Right. You're too safe for now. Yes, you will be. Fair enough. <laughs> Any questions from members of the board? 50, you're good? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, there's no one hiding behind that easel, so I'll just again note for the record that there's no one here to comment on the application. He works for me. You, oh, does he? I don't know. Is there someone there? <laughs> oh, yeah. there, can't even see. Oh, yeah, Alex, thank you for waving your hand. <laughs> um, <laughs> then, Mr. Would you like to say anything in conclusion? Um, no, just thank you for consideration. Okay. Um, who'd like to begin the deliberations? This one's what easy. a hodgepodge of applications this evening. Yeah, this one's an easy one. I think that's a great use of space, especially if you're not going to use it. Um, and it's a beautiful home. I think it will enhance the home as well. Um, and I don't know, I think you're, you should curb your daughter's uh, clothing <laughs> appetite. <laughs> but uh, that's not for me to say. Um, but I would be definitely um, open to approve the application. Care to add anything? This one's you got to really like dig deep for it. I, I want to formalize the clothing. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's going to be conditioned. No, <laughs> just, no, no it's, 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 it's a very modern request, and uh, it's, it's it's well done. Yeah, no, it's yeah. I, I, I would also agree. Uh, I, I don't think there are any negatives to this, and uh, I can see the uh, the positive, so uh, I can support this. No, I don't see any infringement, particularly because it's an existing, arguably more actively used space. Uh, by enclosing it, it should, if anything, minimize the impact of any potential encroachment. So uh, with that, in addition, I could support the application. Uh, with the condition as noted, uh, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Liz? Vice Chairman Steiner? Yes. Ms. Newell? Yes. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Mr. Mullen? Yes. Mr. Malay? Yes. Mr. Likitz? Yes. Chairman Spur? Yes. All right, thank, thank you, you very much. much. That's a good project. Thank you. Okay. And uh, we did all our administrative I work. have one quick question. Did we ever announce the uh, Beacon withdrawal? Yeah, we discussed it. Did we? On the record, we put it on out the record. There? Yeah, we okay, did. Okay, because I must have missed that meeting. But, uh, there was a meeting. I just wanted to make meeting. sure so that uh, the most Swedish thing was gone. Yeah. We were. All right. <laughs> With that, uh, we are adjourned. I don't know what the heck we're adjourned to. We're adjourned to the church. 21st of June, Wednesday. For those so inclined, don't forget to vote tomorrow.